Secret word, you will divide a, a one Schlager Parada. You will divide a hundred dollars. Now, uh, what the secret word is, of course, I can't tell you, but it's a common word, something you usually find around the house. Assuming that you have a house. <laughs> Maggie Ritter, huh? Where are you from, Miss Ritter? It's a very uh, common name in movie actors, isn't it? No. Thelma Ritter, is that any? No, that's no relation to me. I'm from East St. Louis, Illinois. Well, you could still be related. <laughs> and it's Mrs. Ritter. It's Mrs. Ritter? Mrs. Ritter, yes. Yeah. Well, I'm wasting my time here. I can see that. <laughs> Do you object to revealing your age? No, I'm 31. 31. Well, you're a fine-looking lass. Thank you. And Lou Orrett? That's right. That's a kind of an odd name, too. Are you related to Thelma Ritter? Uh, well, I'd like to be related to uh, Mrs. Ritter. Well, you'll have to take that up with Mr. Ritter. I, uh, this is a little out of my province. You know, where are you from, Mr. Orrett? I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I was born about two blocks from Independence Hall. Oh. In, uh, in other words, you're single, is that it? No, I'm married. You're married, and you were still were kind of uh, flirting with uh, Mrs. Ritter here, weren't She's you? She's a very lovely person. Yeah. The fact that you're married, apparently, has made no impression on you at all. <laughs> What about those vows you took at the Justice of the Peace? Well, I remember them. Yeah. Not uh, often enough, I'm afraid. <laughs> you know, they're trying to move the uh, Philadelphia American League team, the athletics. Yes, I... There isn't any other city that will accept them. <laughs> it's really a homeless ball club, wandering around vaguely. Quite of their own accord. She tried to go down to the end of the town. Fifty shillings reward. <laughs> <laughs> That's from When We Were Very Young by A.A. A. Mill. See, I like to spread a little their addition around here, too, you know. It doesn't hurt. No. They come in handy. You may be at a dinner party some night. <laughs> you know how to, how to say hit parade in German? No, I don't. How do you say hit well, parade in German? Well, it's uh, Schlager Parade. Yeah. Wonderful. Remember. <laughs> now, you say you're married, eh, Maggie? Yes, I am. You don't mind if I call you Maggie? No, do call me Maggie. That's the kind of name that gets called Maggie. Well, it's actually Margaret, I suppose. Yes, uh -huh. actually it is. You are married, huh? It's, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, <laughs> how did you meet your husband? We were in school together, Groucho, and... Uh, you got married in school? Well, not quite. Uh, he was a student photographer, and I was interested in modeling and also in photography. And he invited me into his dark room. <laughs> and there aren't things just developed, I suppose. <laughs> You know, that's a, that's a real old joke, Maggie. You know, you know that, huh? You know, we had that <laughs> this thing... This is the truth, though. It's true. This, well, this, this is joke is what I told you. We had that joke on our show the first year we started, eight years ago. That's the last stages, you know, when a comedian starts stealing from himself. <laughs> <laughs> How did you meet your wife, Lou? I met my wife in uh, Phelps or Kell. She was in women's, uh, men's underwear. <laughs> that's even an older joke than the other one about... <laughs> That's really the truth. I went into Phelps to Cal to buy some underwear for myself. This was here locally? Yes, yes, California. about uh, six years ago. Uh -huh. Is she still in underwear? No, no. But, uh, <laughs> Is she out front tonight? Yeah, and I'm going to get murdered, too. <laughs> well, she'll have to get in line. I'm first, you know. Huh? <laughs> so what sort of underwear do you sell, Lou? No, I don't sell. She sold underwear. <laughs> I, uh, I'm in the tuxedo business. Tuxedo business? Yes. What is a tuxedo? It's a junction, isn't it? No, it is a junction, but I represent one of the largest tuxedo concerns in America, after six tuxedo. After six? What, what, what do you do around four o'clock in the afternoon? You get ready to wear the tuxedo after six. Well, how is business? Business is very good. Our business has uh, shown a very good increase over last year. Many are... Uh, dressing up more today than they did before. Uh, yeah, I looked at this audience. Isn't anybody out there with a necktie on? <laughs> now, what about you, Maggie? Uh, what kind of a rock, uh, racket kind of a job do you have? <laughs> well, I made that beauty and charm instructor, Groucho. Oh, sir, you two do well together, huh? Uh, Tuxedo and beauty and charm. What do you mean by beauty and charm? I, one of my clients is Western Airlines. And you mean you put lipstick on an airplane? No, I teach their stewardesses how to be poised in midair. 
Oh, you mean with us? <laughs> Isn't it necessary to have a plane? Well, of course that helps, but I mean toys in the literal sense, how to be oh. relaxed. You know, uh, this last summer a stewardess took one look at me and strapped me into a seat. Uh, just why did she do a thing like that? Well, it was probably for your own safety. Uh, <laughs> are... I, don't, I don't understand this. We were sitting on a park bench. <laughs> Well, you're a very nice, pleasant, and good-looking couple, and I wish you the best of luck in your respective jobs. Now, let's see how much money you can win. Remember, we start you off with a $100 bankroll. Each time you miss a question, you lose half of that bankroll, no matter what it amounts to at the time. You ready? You selected sports. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what do you want to start with? Let's $60. $60. $60. What is the name for the Major League Baseball team from Baltimore? Um, the Braves. No, it's the Orioles. You, you should have known that, right? Orioles, that's right. Yeah. Well, you had $100, you lost half of it, you now have $50. $50. Now, what do you want to try? $70. Now, talk it over before you answer, let's, Lou. Let's take a hard one this time. Let's take a 90. Get that right. in it. $90. At what track is the Preakness run each year? Pimlico. You don't pay any attention now. Okay, it's Pimlico, but... Uh... <laughs> you had 50, you bet 90, you now have $140. Now, Maggie doesn't look like a dope, does she? No. Why don't you ask her advice? What do we go for? You don't have to accept her advice, but at least you could consult her. $80. With, with what sport do you associate the name of Wes Santee? S-A-N-T-E-E. -E. Wes Santee is a trackman. That's right. One of the greatest distance runners of our day. $140, you won 80, you now have $220. Is your last chance to be the other couples? What are you going to go for? Yeah, because... Yeah. All right, $70. Swans, layouts, and gainers are terms used in what sport? Swans, layouts, and gainers. Uh, diving. Diving. Maggie came diving. through. Diving is right, huh? Now give them a big kiss. And you wind up with $290. We invited some high school boys to the show, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Fraser Felter to be on the show. His partner is Mrs. Marie Ledoux. So, folks, could you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Mrs. Uh, Marie Ledoux, I'll start with you. You're a woman. Yes, I think so. Where are you from, Marie? Wacoma, Iowa. Wacoma? How often have you done that? <laughs> On several occasions. Oh, have you? Uh -huh. What kind of a coma is Wacoma? Well, Wacoma is a very small town. There are about 420 people there. At least the last time I was there, that uh, was the is number. Is this the county or the, the city? No, it's a small town. And, of course, it has a rural farm area around it. Wacoma, you know, is the name of an Indian. Uh, I believe she was the princess. And then Decoro was the chief. And he wooed Wacoma in his birch canoe and the Little Turkey River. He That's the legend. I can't it's speak It's on the from banks experience. of the Little Turkey? That's right. The, the Little Turkey River did runs right through the Did you ever swim there? Oh, yes, yes. Was it fun swimming there, or did the giblets get in the way? Huh? <laughs> now, Fraser Felsnap, that's you? Felder, sir. Felder, huh? I'm sorry I've been ignoring you, but uh, somehow it seems the only thing to do, you know. <laughs> uh, how old are you, Fraser? Seventeen, sir. Seventeen? Seventeen. Well, you're pretty tall. You must have been about four feet tall when you were born. Huh? <laughs> Where are you from, Fraser? San Diego. San Diego? Yes, sir. Uh, you, you go to school, I should imagine, at yes, 17? Sir. I go to Helix High School. I'm a senior. Where? Helix High School. Helix High. I'm a senior. Now, do you have any interests aside from your school activities, like cracking an occasional safe? <laughs> well, I'm quite interested in junior achievement, sir. Junior achievement? Well, yes, congratulations, sir. Well, Fraser. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but congratulations. Sounds impressive, doesn't it? Yes, sir, yes. <clears throat> Well, uh, what is the purpose of this outfit? Uh, well, to, well, to teach high school students the fundamentals of business. They form a miniature business and uh, complete the regular business cycle, producing a product and selling it on the open market. Well, tell us about your project, <coughs> uh, Fraser. Well, my particular company, uh, we produced an address plaque. It hung from a wrought iron frame, 
And um, it was on a redwood plaque and it had the house numbers on each side. And we sold our product door to door. And um, well, I think at the end of the year, we paid back seven or eight percent dividend on the stock. You have a secretary or a businessman? Yes, I've got a secretary, sir. Does your secretary sit on your lap while, while you're <laughs> dictating? <laughs> no, sir. No? No. And you call that junior achievement? <laughs> Crazy, you got a lot to learn about big business. <laughs> now, Marie, let's get back to you. Do you have any outside interests, or do you believe running a house is enough like? Oh, no. I own and operate the contour chairs, the Marie contour chairs. Have you ever heard of those? Oh, well, you're Marie. Oh, well, shake hands, Marie. How do you do? You. I saw the uh, ice on your fingers there. I, <laughs> I sat in one of those chairs once. I think it was one of those, and I slipped a disc. <laughs> Not in my chair. I it sold it to been. Steve Allen. He was playing it on his midnight show. <laughs> I can't believe it was my chair. Well, I, it may not have been a Marie chair. It was some kind of one of those convolutions. I don't remember that. Not no. ours. Our chair actually revolutionized the sitting industry. <laughs> is, is that your business slogan? Well, oh, that's one of them. We have others, too. I thought the ideal slogan in the chair business would be, uh, put it there, Charlie. <laughs> Well, you're a very interesting couple, and since you're both interested in business, I'm going to give you a real business opportunity. You're going to play your bet your life. In the race for the $1,500, the first couple won $290, and the secret word is window. Remember, we start you off with a capital investment of $100. If you miss a question, your capital investment is reduced by one half. You select the geography, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. What question do you want to start with? Gentlemen, don't flight. The most money. <laughs> Eyes forward. All right. I want you to be true to Jack Webb and me. <laughs> what do you want? Sixty is fine with me. All right, sure. Sixty. Lambeth, Holborn, Chelsea, and Hampstead are all parts of what city? Talk it over. London, England. That's right. You won $60, you now have $160. Now what do you want to try? Hard or easy? You well, you go ahead, you choose this thing. Let's take $80. Right. 80. On what island was Napoleon born? Talk it over. Is it the one you sent back to? Yeah. Was Crete? Crete. No, it's Corsica. Corsica. Oh, I should have known that. Yeah. You had $160, you lost half of it, you now have $80. Okay, we'll build it up again. All right. It's time. Now, what are you going to try? Oh, 70? 70. Right. 70. In what country is the famous Black Forest? Germany. Germany. Germany is correct. <laughs> you had 80, you won 70, you now have $150. Is your last chance to be the other couples, what are you going to go for? i take the last one. Take the most. A hundred? Okay, according to the last census, what is the largest city in the territory of Alaska? You don't know, guess. Juno? Yes, I do, but... J-U-E-N-E-A-U, I think, is the way you spell it? No, I'm sorry, it's Anchorage. Oh, That's twice as big as the next largest city. I should know, because I sold chairs to Ekman's oh, Furniture that's and Anchorage. That's terrible. Well, you lost half your 150. You wind up with $75. Thank you. Would you be good enough to entice the next couple out here? All right, Groucho, we have some people with interesting jobs. Mrs. Kathleen O'Flynn and Mr. Abe Roth. Would you come out, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word. Something you find around the house. Abe Roth. Shake, Abe. Gotcha. I haven't seen you in a long time. Quite some time. I haven't seen you for about 15 years. <coughs> Last time I saw you, I think you were officiating at the Ramage Hamus fight. Was That's that a long right? time ago? This is one of the greatest referees in this country. <laughs> When I tell you to break, I want you to break clean. You both know the rules of the New York State Athletic Commission. So go to your corners and come out fighting. Uh -huh. It's all right. Pretty good. Very good. Very good. That's <laughs> right. Give him the old one, too? That's yes, right. Abe, I've stalled as long as I can. Let's find out some facts about you that I don't know. Where, where are you from originally? 
I'm from uh, New York, the east side of New York. Is that so? Mm -hmm. Well, you've lost most of your uh, accent. Have I? Yes. I haven't, but you have. Huh? <laughs> How long have you been handing down bum decisions? I've never given a bum decision, Groucho. Then why do you always leave the ring with a police escort? <laughs> Is this really true that you never made a bum decision? Not to my knowledge. I never made a bum decision. I'm only kidding, Abe. I've decided you're as honest as the day is long. Thank you, Groucho. Of course, you realize the days are getting shorter now. <laughs> Uh, who are some of the big fighters that you've worked with in the ring? Well, I worked Tiger Flowers. Do you remember him? Yes, the fighting parson. That's the fellow. He used to read a Bible before That's the right. fight. That's the fellow. And do a flip after each decision. Yeah. Bud Taylor. I worked Jack Dempsey. I worked Clever Sensio, Fiddler Barber. Henry Armstrong. Henry Armstrong. Uh, you name them, I've worked them in the last 30 I'm years. I'm sure you have. You worked some of the biggest fights of the century. I know that. Mm -hmm. I'll come back to you in a minute, Abe. Why don't you do a little road work while I'm talking to Mrs. O'Flynn? All right. You could stand a little, Abe, you know. <laughs> exactly. Kathleen O'Flynn, eh? Yeah. What part of Turkey were you born in? Uh? I was born right here in Los Angeles. Do you have a job or do you spend all your time around the house plotting the racing form? No, I work at Queen of Angels. And uh, you're, a, you're a nurse there? That's right. Mm hmm you have that nice tapioca look, you know. <laughs> That's the only place in the world you can get tapioca pudding is in a hospital. <laughs> I suppose I came to your hospital. W would you look after me? Not unless you were going to have a baby. <laughs> I don't know. I... <laughs> Lately, I, I have had a mad craving for dill pickles and ice cream. <laughs> what is your job at the Queen of Angels, Kathleen? I'm the maternity supervisor. Well, you have charge of the whole uh, thing? Maternity uh, department, uh-huh. Must be interesting work. Do they keep you pretty busy? Lots of babies? Oh, yes. We average around 375 a month. And last year, we had uh, 4,531. Fantastic, 4,500 babies in, in one year. It's a small city, isn't it? Yes. It's bigger than Waukema or Wacoma. <laughs> 4,500 babies in one year. I'd like to hear the Russians say they invented that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you call massive retaliation. <laughs> Do you have a time payment plan for new fathers? Yes, we do. That's nice. Mm -hmm. I imagine it's... the Bank of America must own half the kids in this country. Well, at our hospital this year, <laughs> at our hospital this year, uh, if four have been born there, any over the seventh, the seventh or over are free. The seventh one? They're on the house. The seventh one is free <laughs> and on right. the house? That's right. I wish you'd have told me that 40 years ago. <laughs> Now, what are some of the things the new father say? Do they holler, I was robbed? <laughs> no, they want to know how soon it's going to be born, and they want to know what uh, when it is born, whether it's a boy or a girl. And once in a while, you'll hear a father say, how come he had his already? My wife was in before his. <laughs> well, I don't blame him for being perturbed. I never did like people who sneak in the line ahead of me. <laughs> I'm going talking to you two, but it's time to play your bet your life. <laughs> we start you off with $100. If you miss a question, you lose half your bankroll. In the race for the $1,500, the first couple is still leading with $290. All right, now go, go to your corners and come out fighting. <laughs> you selected music, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, uh, you can start with a 10, 20, 50, 80, 100, anything you want. Mm -hmm. the big here. 70. 70? Yeah. 70. What noted, what noted English author, playwright, and composer wrote, Someday I'll find you, I'll follow my secret heart, and many other fine songs. Mad Dog's an Englishman, you don't know? Noel Coward. Most famous English writer and composer. You lost half your hundred dollars, you now have fifty dollars. All right, now what do you want? Eighty. 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 The orchestra will play a song that's become a standard march tune since it was written twenty-four years ago. What's the name of it? I love it 
Mitchell. What is it? I Love a Parade. I Love a Parade is right. You've won $80. You now have $130. Okay, now what do you want to try? The bigger the money, the harder the question. 90? One of America's most talented composers turned out songs like T for Two, I Want to Be Happy, and Hallelujah. Who was he? Talk it over. Looks like the office has got us. Yeah. We know the... What were the songs? T for Two, Hallelujah, I Want to Be Happy. Sing Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Yes. No. Vincent Humans. Never. One of the great composers. Well, you lost half your 130, you now have $65. Here's your, why did you, how did you happen to pick this uh, category? We like music. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you like it, but apparently you never listen to it. Eh? <laughs> well, it's your last chance to be the other couples. What are you going to try? 100, 10, 30? 60. 60. See if you can tell me the name of this song. It's been a standard for a long time. Music maestro. <laughs> Me. All of me is right. And you wind up with $125. Right. All right, here we go, here we go. Here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 se seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please don't help in the audience. Generally speaking, the tropic tropical zone is bounded by two imaginary lines encircling the globe parallel to the equator. The northern line or boundary is the Tropic of Cancer. For $1,500, what do you call the southern line? Okay, kids, what's the answer you two have decided upon? Um, Take a guess. North Pole? No. <laughs> Oh, it's the tropics.